Hey everybody, here's our first day of our new chapter, uh, Properties of Triangles. We're going to go through this, do a couple examples, and then I'm going to get you guys to do the examples in the textbook. If you don't have your textbook, don't worry. Uh, I'm going to get you guys a picture of what's up there. So we just finished off doing polygons and similar polygons and kind of scale factor talking about how things can be proportional this is super super similar so identifying similar polygons is the same as triangles except we don't quite talk about scale factor all the time because we're not necessarily given an original and an, uh, and a scale drawing however we can say one is a scale drawing of the other uh, but we'll get into that in a second so triangles are special, uh, special type of polygon because they have a couple of useful properties. And we went over these at the start, but I want to go over them again because if you don't have these kind of in the back of your mind when you're doing these questions, they become very difficult. So first you have to know that our equilateral isosceles and scalene triangles are three different types of triangles. So equilateral, all the sides are the same. Isosceles, two of the sides are the same. And scalene, all of them are different. The isosceles is the one that's uh, often in a question where they'll say, oh, this is an isosceles triangle. And that gives you a hint, oh, okay, I know two sides are the same. Uh, hatch marks represent that two sides are equal. So you'll notice there's like one hatch mark here and one hatch mark here. That means that that short side and that short side are equal. Same with the double hatch mark and the double hatch mark. It means those two sides are equal. And a little square in the corner represents that an angle is 90 degrees. So if we had like a little square drawn in here, then we would say, oh, it's a 90 degree angle. Cool. It means it's a right triangle. And Pythagorean theorem works only for right triangles. And if you remember Pythagorean theorem, then it should look something like this. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And that's only applicable when your triangle has that right angle. So don't try and use Pythagorean theorem when you don't have a right triangle because your answer will get messed up okay you'll get an answer but it won't be right uh, also important to note when you're trying to use pythagorean theorem that c is always your hypotenuse or it's the longest side of your triangle okay and you can identify that one by it being across from the right angle a and b it doesn't really matter you can say this is a or you can say this is a uh, it's up to you. You get to decide which one's A and B, but C has to be the one across from the right angle. Uh, the sum of all angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. This is an important one. This one is used a lot in these questions uh, because you're basically given two angles and then you might have to figure out the third. And that might be the one piece of information you need to correctly answer the problem. Okay, So we have 109 48 and 23 degrees is our angles there and if you add them all up you'll see it equals 180. So if you're given a triangle that looks like this and you're given an angle here of 30 you can figure out this angle here by saying okay we have 30 and I know this one stands for 90 we have 120 which means this angle needs to be 60 degrees. Okay so that's an important concept. It'll come up a lot. And we'll we'll do some practice. You guys you guys will get used to it, get used to using it. So when checking if two triangles are similar, um, we're going to need kind of two pieces or one of two pieces of information. The first one is that the measures of corresponding angles must be equal. So if all the angles, that's just kind of a fancy way of saying, if all the angles are the same in two triangles, then the triangles are going to be similar. They have to be. And the other one is if all of the sides are the same, then you know that the triangles have to be similar triangles. It's kind of easier to think of it this way, I think. Uh, the angles need to match or the sides need to be proportional. And if the angles all match, then all the sides will be proportional. Or if all the sides are proportional, then all the angles will match. So let's do an example. Draw one out over here. 
So let's say we've got triangle like this. Excuse me, I'm just getting used to drawing on a computer. I'm pretty bad at it still. Uh, so let's say that's triangle ABC. Okay, and we'll give you the side lengths of 7 and 6 and 10. And let's say our other triangle is DEF. So D E F. And our side lengths that we're given is 14 and 12. So at this point, we don't really know what this one is, but we can figure it out because we're going to set up proportions of B and C and A and C with their corresponding sides here and here. All right. So let's see what that looks like. So we'll do, let's do BC first because it's shorter. So we say BC divided by EF. So 6 divided by 12. And we get 0 0.5. Let's go AC compared to DF. So AC is 7. And DF is 14. And we get 0 0.5 as well. So we can say that this smaller triangle is actually a reduction. Because what we're kind of finding is that this is our scale factor here. So what we're finding is that this is a reduction with a scale factor of 0 0.5. Alternatively, we could do it the other way, right? And we could say, let's change this here. We could say, go the other way and say, okay, put EF on top and put BC on the bottom. And we get a scale factor of 2. And we would have AC on the bottom, we'd have DF on top this time, and we get a scale factor of 2. So this would be saying that this is an enlargement of the smaller triangle. So then what we have to set up is we have to set up a proportion with the same things on the top and bottom, but we'll have one unknown, and we'll just say it's X or something. So let's say X over its corresponding side is 10. And we know that our scale factor is going to equal 2 in this case. So if we go and use our algebra, right, we are going to multiply this by 10, multiply this by 10. These are going to cancel out. We just get x equals 20. So we know that this side should be 20. So that's how we do one of those examples. We're going to go through a couple more examples, but I want to upload it as a separate video because I want you guys to maybe try the examples yourself before you uh, watch how they're done. If you can't figure out the examples, though, there's some you know there's some description in the book, but uh, watching it sometimes helps. My advice to you would be to use do those examples without looking at the description in the book first, see if you can do them, and if you can't figure out, use the book, and then watch the video afterwards. Okay. Uh, the last thing that I want to talk about is when we're naming triangles, uh, and we name similar triangles, we need to order the letters so that they show up in the right order uh, for the corresponding sides. Okay. So we'll erase this real quick. Whoa, that's not an eraser. Erase that real quick. And you'll notice when we're talking about these, we call them ABC, triangle ABC, right? And this one we call triangle DEF. Because these AB was our corresponding side to DE, just like it is here. DE corresponds to AB. Okay. This gets a little weird when one of these gets rotated. Um, so if we erase this, 
and let's draw this one but in a different orientation so let's say we put D over here E over here and F over here we can't just choose the closest side like a can't be E um, we want to write this so the corresponding sides match up already or still sorry so if we have 14 we have 20 and this one was what 12 um, what we're going to do here is we're going to identify the longest side so that is D to E and it matches up with this one right if we're so if we're saying ABC is our triangle we're going to say okay what corresponds to AB well it's the longest side so let's start with DE as our longest side and then what corresponds to uh, our next line BC it's the shortest side so DE and then is EF our shortest side it is so we can say DEF and we know that we've written this in the exact same order in terms of corresponding sides Okay, that's it for now. Go try those examples uh, and then watch the video about the examples after you try them once. Cheers, guys.